Hi, today we are going to be talking about um, all of the different and similar organelles that plants and animal cells have. Um, if you remember what we talked about before, we talked about the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So today we're focusing just on eukaryotes. But I want you to remember the five things that every cell has in common. We talked about DNA, which is the genetic information. We talked about cytoplasm, which kind of just holds all of the organelles in place. We talked about the cell membrane, which regulates what goes in and out of the cell. We talked about the cytoskeleton, which provides extra structure on the inside of the nucleus. And we talked about ribosomes. And ribosomes are important because they make proteins. So considering that every cell has those five things, then when we're talking about eukaryotic cells, we're talking, we're including those too. So that was just a little review. All right, so all eukaryotic cells have these organelles that are listed. And the very first one, and probably the most important because we're talking about eukaryotes, is the nucleus. The nucleus is what we would consider, um, to put it plainly, or simply the control center or the boss's office. This is the middle part right here right here and inside of that holds um, this is called the chromatin and that's just a really fancy word of saying uncoiled DNA so all of this like dark pink fuzzy looking stuff in the middle that's all DNA in there and the DNA holds the directions for everything that the cell is going to do so the nucleus has a pretty important job its main job its main function is to protect that DNA and then the DNA is actually what's controlling what goes on inside the cell all right, the next one is ribosomes. We already talked about ribosomes, but they're really important, so we're going to talk about them again. Ribosomes make proteins. They are like little mini um, machines or little mini um, factories that are inside of these cells. And this one, um, it's hard to see. There's a couple of them floating around free in here, and then there's some of them that are attached to this um, big maze-looking thing that we'll talk about in just a second. Those ribosomes are making proteins, so the ones that are attached to this maze looking thing are going to be proteins that are going to be shipped out of the cell, and the ones that are free and floating around in the cytoplasm are going to make proteins that are going to stay inside the cell for the cell to use. And we'll talk more about protein synthesis um, later in the year, but it's going to be really re important to remember um, that the ribosomes, even though they're tiny, have a really big job inside the cell. The next one is the mitochondria, the mitomitochondria. This is right here. That is our energy source um, for the cell. So we have to eat certain things to give our body energy. And we talked about um, one of those things being carbohydrates. So the mitochondria is responsible for breaking down those carbohydrates and giving our, our cells energy for them to do every single thing. The cells that... <laughs> Excuse me. The cells that have um, a much higher requirement of energy, like muscle cells, are going to have a lot more mitochondria than cells that don't need as much energy, like maybe your skin cells. So here, this cell just has two, but honestly, most cells are going to have a lot more than just two because cells need a lot of energy to do all their normal functions. Okay. Now to the endoplasmic reticulum, or what we call the ER for short. This little maze thing that I talked about right here is the endoplasmic reticulum. And there's actually two different kinds, but we're going to focus mostly on the um, rough ER. The rough ER is called that because if you look here, all of those little bumps, see all those little ribosomes, um, kind of makes it look studded or makes it look pebbly so it makes it look like it has a rough texture to it okay the endoplasmic reticulum's job is to transport proteins within the cell so it's really just going to move it from one area of the cell to the other so there really is an advantage that these ribosomes are stuck to the ER because if you check this out the ribosomes are going to make the protein the protein's going to go inside here into this little maze of tubes and it's going to move all the way through here until it's ready to be pushed out and go somewhere else in the cell. Um, 
So that is the ER. There's also a smooth ER, and if you look here in this picture, there's our smooth ER. It's called smooth because it doesn't have the ribosome stuck to it, so it for sure has a smoother texture, and that's actually important. Um, it helps with um, making lipids and also helps with detoxification. But for our purposes in our class, really I need you to focus on the rough ER and its important job of transporting proteins through the cell. All right, on to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus, or also known as the Golgi body, so if you hear it called either of those, it's talking about the same thing. This one kind of looks like a stack of, I've heard it called like a stack of pancakes. This one to me, I don't know, that one kind of looks like a really funky rainbow. I don't know, it looks pretty weird. But really, it's this huge stack of membranes. And what's gonna happen is those proteins after they move through the ER, they're going to be moved onto the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. And the Golgi apparatus is responsible for packaging those proteins up. So it's going to like modify the proteins, stick little carbohydrates or other little things on the outside, kind of like a stamp or something, and it's going to get it ready to ship out of the cell. So those are going to be all the important modifications that help that protein um, be completed and kind of um, give it like a, a signal on the outside of it that says exactly what its job is. Okay, um, one other thing that you probably don't have on your notes, but there's a picture of it in here, and I want to make sure that um, we talk about it, is this is showing um, centrioles. We'll come back to centrioles when we talk about how the cells divide, but I did want to point it out to you since it's right there. Um, in the picture. We also have over here a lysosome. Lysosomes are only found in animal cells. They are really important because they help digest all the stuff that the cell intakes or stuff that the cell doesn't need inside of it anymore or some of the proteins that may have been packaged up and ready to ship out but the cell decided it either didn't need it or that they weren't good proteins. So the lysosome really has an important job. It has to go around and make sure that the entire cell is clean and doesn't have extra junk hanging out because you don't need extra junk in your cells, right? So the lysosome actually is like this great big pouch and that pouch has all these digestive enzymes on the inside of it. So the lysosome will kind of like move over and its membrane will wrap around these little chunks of stuff that doesn't that the cell doesn't need anymore and then it starts to break it down and digest it and if the cell decides that it is not functional anymore um, these little lysosomes will actually open up their membrane and it causes the whole cell to lyse or burst that's where that um, prefix lyse comes from that's where the word lysol comes from it's actually killing those bacteria cells it's making the membranes pop Good for us, bad for them. <clears throat> Let's look at the plant cell, okay? So if you look in here, here is the nucleus right here. Here's our Golgi apparatus. This is a mitochondria, and here's another mitochondria. Here's the smooth ER, this one's the rough ER. All these little purpley things on there are the ribosomes on the rough ER, and then there's some free-floating ribosomes right here. This one's actually showing lysosome in, this, in the plant cell. I'm not sure how accurate that is. I've actually seen um, in literature that only animal cells have lysosomes. And then it's got a couple other things in here that are hanging out that are specific just to plants. And we will get to that in just a second. <coughs> so here's our lysosomes. Only in animal cells. It cleans up and digests extra stuff. And then another thing that I wanted to talk about is um, a vacuole. We're actually going to call this, um, animal cells have small vacuoles, and they are just um, small. They kind of look very similar to a lysosome, actually, and they're going to hold water and other stuff for the cell. So they're kind of like little mini um, water balloons hanging out inside the cell. And then, so those are animal cells. There are some things that are specific just to plant cells. So plants have all of those things that we just talked about, minus the lysosomes and the small vacuoles, but they have three extra things that animal cells don't have. The first one 
that I automatically think of when I think of plants is the chloroplast because chloroplasts are green and that's what actually makes the plant cell look green, okay? Its job is not to make the plant cell look green. That's kind of like a side effect. The, the job of the chloroplast is to make sugar, okay? So it's going to absorb sunlight and it's going to convert that sunlight into chemical energy or we have talked about it as glucose. Another thing that plant cells have that animal cells don't is a cell wall. So here, if you look all around here, here's our cell membrane. So they do have cell membranes. And then around that cell membrane is a big boxy-like structure. It's a cell wall. And its job is to provide extra protection and extra structure for those plants. Plants don't have bones like animals do, so or like some animals do. So they have to have something that help those plants stand up rigid and that Part of that is the cell wall. The last thing that plant cells have that animal cells do not is a central vacuole. On the plant or on the animal cell slide, if you notice I had small in parentheses, animals do have small vacuoles inside of their cells. Plants have these huge central vacuoles, and I wish this picture showed that it was a little bit larger because it actually takes up the majority of the inside of the plant. It's so big and it's located in the center of the cell that it actually pushes the nucleus off to the side in the plant cell. Its whole job is to hold a lot of water and some other materials too, but it has to hold water for the plant cell so that the, um, the cell walls push out so it's nice and strong and what they call um, rigid or turgid. And then the other thing that it does is um, it actually allow, it causes water to um, move in and out of the membrane because of the large concentration of water on the inside of the cell. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about how things move in and out of the membrane. But it really, it looks very simple. It really has a very important job. Think of it as a ginormous water balloon sitting smack dab in the middle of the plant cell. All right, so if you look here, I know we already talked about this a little bit, but here's our nucleus, our ER, the ribosomes, we've got our Golgi apparatus, We've got the mitochondria, and we have chloroplast. The reason I'm pointing all of this out is because I want you to see this has mitochondria and chloroplast. There is a big misconception that plant cells don't have mitochondria. Well, they can make energy from the sun and turn it into glucose, but then their cells have to be able to break that down and provide their cell with the correct kind of energy um, by breaking that glucose down. And we'll talk more about that one when we talk about photosynthesis, and cell respiration. Lots of to-be-continued kind of things that we're going to talk about in this podcast. So that is the difference between plant cells and animal cells. And this is an example of what I don't want to see on your cell test. This is not a plant cell. So this is how not to answer a cell question, but I thought it was really funny and it made me giggle, and I thought I'd share it with you. So, hopefully, you got all of that information, and now you can pause my video, and you can go back and look at all of the different organelles and quiz yourself to see if you can tell me all of their functions. It's a lot, I know, but I know you can do it. If you have any questions, don't forget, please come back and ask me in class.